Great here. I was going to make a video with uh, going through like a, a, a normal battle for me and, and giving my thought process on why I was doing certain things. And I, I was doing this because I was trying to offer advice to some other people I've been divisioning up with. Then I was listening to Division Chat and I realized that um, we have a lot of new players in Wookiee. And I don't mean new to Wookiee because I'm new to Wookiee, especially Wookiee 4, obviously. But I mean to World of Warships, which is understandable. And I was making presumptions that people know things that they might not know. So this video is meant to address that. Basically, the UI, the combat UI. Some, some things that you might not know uh, or aren't obvious coming into the game as a new player, um, which a lot of veterans have set as their defaults and forget that they aren't defaults. So let's run down the list. First off, I've got this mod right here that shows uh, the statistics of my ship. So like it tops out at 30 and a half knots. It has a detection radius of 15.9 kilometers uh, I, I can shoot out to 21.4 kilometers. All of that information, it, since I'm bouncing in between ships constantly, I like to have that on my screen so I can look down there and know instantly in this ship, I can. these are my capabilities. However, this is available to everyone. If you hold down the control button to get your, your uh, mouse pointer and you hover it over your ship's uh, silhouette, all of that information comes up. It's just, you know, you, you have to actually look for it. The other way that you can bring it up is pressing the H key and holding it. And here you can see I can move my aiming and there's all the information. This mod just takes all of that information, which is already available to you, and puts it on the screen. But modding is a different video. I just wanted to point out that that information is available. So if you ever get into a fight and you're like, how far do my torpedoes go? What's my detection radius? Especially if you're a DD, it's good to know what your detection radius is. This is how you get it. Now, the second one is the mini map over here. Uh, a lot of veterans set up their mini map a very particular way. And uh, a lot of it is not default. So first off, I believe when we start off, the minimap is completely minimized. If you hit plus and minus on your number pad, you can resize your minimap to something that is actually quite legible, but taking up a lot of screen shape to next to useless. Personally, I bump it up two, sometimes three, you know, one or the other, it, it, it fluctuates. Now, the other thing about the minimap is right here, this, this uh, gear icon. If you click on this and bring it up, there we go. Oh, I have to keep holding control. That's what's going on. There are some checkboxes on here. Now, everyone has their torpedo range and their main battery firing range as circles. Here, these two circles. What a lot of people don't know is that you can also turn on your detectability range by C, which is this blue... Uh, uh, um, dashed line and secondary battery firing range which is this green line right here you can also turn on the range numerical values which I like to have turned on I believe all of those are turned off by default and what this does is it lets you know hey this is how far I can fire this is where I'm going to be detected this is where my secondaries are which is very important on a German BB that you have set up for secondaries and here's how far my torpedoes are. Again, I picked the torpids just because it has all of those armaments. So now I know what my engagement range, ranges are. So I can see if I have a, an enemy ship at like 12 kilometers, I know if I close just a, a little bit more, I will have them in secondary range and then my, my firepower increases, obviously. Those are good things to have turned on. Um, these settings are per ship. I believe they're per ship, so you have to turn them on for each of them. Um, I know that the secondary battery firing range is per ship because I have a lot of ships where I have that turned off because I don't care about the secondaries on those ships. So the third thing that uh, a lot of veterans turned on but are forget is not a default. 
options in here in settings go over to controls and it is where is it show both main battery and tts load indicators those are torpedo tubes load indicators if i turn this off and i go back here you'll see at the very bottom down here that my th th this is my gun status two of them are on on target two of them are rotating when they're all on target they'll all turn blue and when i shoot once they get back on target There we go. We'll see the reload indicators for each each gun individually. Okay, down here, this is just to the lowest one that's available, uh, or is it the highest? I think it's the highest. Now, if I switch over to torpedoes, you'll note that I don't see what the individual gun uh, uh, reloads are. Now, for guns, usually it doesn't matter because you're firing all four guns at the same time. No big deal. But what happens when you have a torpedo and you fire this side and you have another uh, another torpedo launcher on the other side of your ship? Notice down here, if I can get the, the number to appear, it's really transparent. There it is. The one side is loading in 1 minute 15 seconds. The other side is green and the indicator here says, hey, you're available to shoot. Well, what happens when I go back to my guns? I don't know when I'm going to be able to shoot off of this side of the ship. That is what this checkbox is for. By setting that at the very bottom, you'll now, see, you'll now see that one side is going to reload in 50 seconds for torpedoes. The other side is loaded, and my guns uh, are here. When I switch weapons, the primary weapon is the bottom row. The secondary is the top row. So I always know exactly what the reload times are on my weapons so I, I know, hey, I, I, I can turn this way or turn that way and, and know what, what's going to happen. Now, another thing that is turned on by default that a lot of veterans turn off is again in the settings, under controls, it is, uh, well, first off, uh, alternative interface mode, full. Turn it to full. I, th I believe it's adaptive or off. Just turn it to full. Believe me, it's better. Uh, I'll explain what that is when, when I get close to the airship. The other one is terrain hit uh, a collision avoidance system. Off, on, or in binocular view. I don't remember what the default is, but almost everyone turns this off. Now, what the collision avoidance system is... Let me uh, rotate my ship here. It's the uh, the collision indication is that that annoying buzzing and the the island indicator on your HUD when you get uh, close to an island right here. Now the collision avoidance is the system that says, okay, if you are steaming straight in an island like this, and it looks like you're not going to turn. Say you know you're you're zoomed in over here. There's the the collision indication. The collision avoidance at a certain point will actually turn the ship for you. Unfortunately, it's really stupid. Now, with it turned off, this is what happens. You run aground. You just slam right into the island. Now this seems like a bad thing, and in some cases it is, but. You'll note, first off, no damage is done. You are instantly stopped, which means you can now start reversing immediately. The second thing, and this is why a lot of veterans turn it off, is they will intentionally ground themselves. Because say that uh, there was a ship coming across that strait, and I fired torpedoes over there. If he's coming across this headland right here, and he has an idea that, hey, these torpedoes are coming, Maybe he has hydro running and he knows that the torpedoes are coming. He will want to avoid those torpedoes at any cost. And the quickest way to do that, turn your ship nose into the into the, the headland and run yourself aground. You will avoid the torpedoes. Yes, you, you stop and you're a sitting duck for anyone who's broadside to you. So be careful when you do it. But that is why a lot of 
veteran players just turn off the collision avoidance because it does things that you may not want to do. It may turn you in a direction you don't want to turn, and it is very, very sensitive on how close you can get to things. When you are decent with uh, piloting a ship, you can get very close to land, very close to other ships, to the point where a collision avoidance would be fighting you to try to get you to, to change directions. But sometimes you want to be super close, uh, like you're avoiding torpedoes, or, or you're trying to get your guns on track, but you, you, you just want to barely miss an ally ship running into them, and you just want to skirt right past them. It gives you much more control over your ship, and, and the, the downside is, yeah, every once in a while, if you're not paying attention, um, you run aground. And the, the answer there is to pay more attention. Which brings me to the next point. When you're zoomed in like this, first off, please, whatever you do, do not mouse zoom in and out like that. Mouse zooming is great when you when you need to do this and you want to look at how pretty, how pretty your ship is. Or when you're zoomed in and you want to zoom out a bit so you have a, a wider view, but you, you're still in the, the sniper view. But when you are transitioning between guns, between the wide view like this and the sniper view, it is toggled by the shift key. Please, 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 please use it. Uh, the, the reason for that is... It's just faster. It, it snaps to your la last view, and most people are zoomed all the way in almost all the time anyway. So either you're zoomed all the way out so you can get a, a wide view of what's happening with the battle, or you're zoomed all the way in. Now, something else that a lot of people don't know is if you hold down the right mouse button, you see how it says free look in the middle. I can move my camera anywhere, and my guns, you'll note, they're not turning at all. I can look around in this view and not have my guns turn. So you can say, wait a minute, uh, if I turn a certain direction, am I going to run into an island? You can, you can look and check. But the thing that people, most people don't know is when you're zoomed in like this and you're like, hey, I'm over here. Wait a minute. I'm heading towards an island. Am I going to hit it? Right mouse button pulls you out of zoom. And when you release right mouse button, you zoom and snap back to where your guns are. So that's a quick way for you to look around while you're zoomed in and then snap back to your guns. Speaking of the guns, a lot of people are on crosshair one because this is the default, which looks like this. You'll note that the, the hash marks only go out about, I would say, halfway out to the edge of the screen. This is next to useless. It really is. At low at low tiers, this is fine. But at high tiers, oh no, I don't want to exit the battle. At high tiers, uh, settings, there we go. You're gonna want a crosshair that goes all the way across the screen. You'll notice two goes wider, three goes even wider, four is a different color, but you generally want something that goes all the way across the screen because there are times when I'm leading a a target that that 20 mark way over on the side, um, I am putting the the bow of the ship beyond that 20 mark to lead it correctly. So my personal preference is static type 9. I know that a lot of people swear by dynamic, and I'll, uh, let me show you what dynamic looks like. Uh, dynamic looks like this. There's only one dynamic, and here it is. You notice the hash, hash marks only go out to 10, but they go to the entire width of the screen. And as I zoom in and out, you see how the hash mark changes. So here, I can zoom out here, and this goes out to about 15. Yeah, so this is out to 15. But if I zoom back, you see how it goes out to 70. So 15 is that central part. That's that's when I'm zoomed in. That's what dynamic does. It's, it's great if you know how to use it. I don't. Um, I've tried to figure out how to use it. I can't do it. 
I just can't. I'm not saying that it's it's worse or better than what I use. It is just I have no idea how to use it. There supposedly there's benefits to using it. Um, it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to indicate the number of seconds it will take your shell to hit that particular spot. So if I if I go back to dynamic here, there we go. Save changes. So that five mark would be if my flight time to that that. Uh, uh, wherever that aiming was, was five seconds. Or, or if my flight time to that distance for my shells was five seconds, right now it's uh, 3.1 seconds to, to that, uh, that island, um, you would go to the five-second mark, or in this case the three-second mark, and that's where your, your shells would land. Uh, if the, the enemy ship were moving at 30 kilometers a, uh, or 30 knots, I think that's what it is. Like I said, I never knew, I never learned how to use it. It just confuses the crap out of me, so I I don't know. There are videos out there, people swear by it, uh, they can be very accurate with it. I just don't use it. What I use is I use, as I said, Type 9. Uh, basically, a, a lot of these types are identical. The only difference is that the, the coloring changes. So this is just personal preference. But the reason that I use this particular crosshair is because uh, even though the, the hash marks are static, um, like I said, I almost always fire when I'm completely zoomed in. I know that on certain classes of ships, on, on most battleships up to light tiers, if I put my 7.5 marker, where I want to hit, that's where my shells land whenever they're steaming full speed. For cruisers, 12.5 is what works. For destroyers, 15 or 17.5, depending on the on the destroyer. That's just what I've learned from experience on where my shells land based off of uh, the speed of the enemy ship and the flight time of my shells. Obviously, I, I need to make some adjustments on some ships because shells are slower. Um, that's why sometimes I will miss uh, uh, shots early in the match. Now, I'm going to come up on the on the buy urn here. Uh, and this will uh, show the one thing on the minimap down here. You'll notice he's inside my secondary range. So if I highlight him and I select him as my target, my secondaries will start to shoot because I'm in secondary range. Oh, in case you didn't know, you can set targets by bringing up your mouse and then saying, hey, I want to fire at this target. It sets a priority target for your secondaries, which if you have manual secondaries, you have to set that to be able to get it to uh, get them to fire. So let's go with the the last uh, bit of advice I have when it comes to the battle UI. The crosshairs, uh, the line across the bottom is if you have a perfect broadside. And that's where what the dynamic crosshair shows you. Now, as I go across the angle or uh, across this ship, you'll notice down here, this is a mod. This shows... Um, my angle on his bow and his angle on my bow on the bottom, okay? The reason that I use type 9 is because you'll note, as I as the angle increases, I would be able to use, like right here, I would be able to use those diagonal lines as alternative uh, uh, aim markings. So... The, the red line across the bottom is when you are broadside on at a 90 degree angle. He's not moving, so this, this uh, doesn't really help, but as I cross, uh, cross in front of him, you'll note that at some points, like right here, 
See how he's he's starting to line up with that that bottom yellow uh, yellow line. If he were moving, I would be able to use that as the water line, and that's why I use this mark. I'm able to to fire on ships that are angling towards me or away from me. I didn't mean to do that, but oh well. I'm able to 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 line up my shots on those angles because they they act as alternate water lines. Um, and because of that, I've gotten very good at, at hitting ships at an angle. Um, and that's why I, I never switch back to the dynamic uh, uh, crosshair, because the dynamic crosshair only has that one line across the bottom for perfect broadside shots. Now, at higher levels of play, you will run into people who will do everything in their power to prevent you from getting a broadside on them. So you would have to learn how to lead angled shots and... This non-dynamic crosshair has those lines, which help for that. Like I said, dynamic has its strengths. Uh, the crosshair that I use, that's why I use it. It has its strengths. Neither's better or worse. It's just that they suit different purposes. Anyway, that's the battle UI and the defaults that uh, that get set by a lot of veterans. Uh, that that they forget that they're not defaults that you actually have to go in and set those settings uh the the rings on the mini map the setting up a crosshair other than that terrible terrible type one crosshair which is next to useless um making sure that uh you have your uh, all of your reload timers set up that's a good one oh i forgot to mention the the Alternate mode is uh, the one that shows you the nameplate and the the health bars on all of the enemies at all times. Normally, you would have to press Alt for that. Why? That's information you need. And zooming in and out with Shift, and also uh, free moving the camera with the right mouse button, which also zooms out. That's I believe that's everything that I covered. And forms really just the the basics that people oh. Not or, or turning off collision avoidance. That's the big one. These are all things that are presumed everyone does eventually because it helps you have better information in, in the game or it gives you more control over your ship. So that's what this video is and I always suck at closing them out so... Have fun.